thing. Batty. Oh, Hi. Oh. Hi, Kaylee. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> You're so friendly uh -uh. today. Hi, it's Roy and Val. And we're here again. Um, it's been a few weeks, right? Because we took it's like been a few we weeks. missed a week or something. We but had a holiday in we there. had a holiday in there. That's right, and it uh, slowed us down. But we're back. I was also wondering about good the, or bad. the next one. Is the next one actually what day is Christmas on? Um, it's on the twenty fifth. It's like every year. Oh, stop! <laughs> but, it's on a Monday. Thank you. Oh, okay. Oh, that's what you meant. I'm oh, sorry. God. Okay. Um, it is. I think. Okay. Well, I was just trying to figure out when we're doing the next one this month because we. Might... I think in two. I think in probably two weeks, which mm -hmm. which would be the. Uh, not next week. Sixteenth. Am I not right? Am I not good at math? I see. It, I think it's the. It's 13th. okay. Oh. Oh my gosh. See, well, there you go. Why do I keep thinking it's Sometimes. later than it is? I see, no we. I know we're bad. I know we are not good at this. Well, but, well, okay, well, we'll, we'll be back with something else. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Yeah, we'll joining see us today. You so. <laughs> and we wanted to talk about boxes. Um, for a couple of reasons. One is we were thinking they might be a nice, quick gift for somebody, right? So we're still in that gift quick. giving part, yeah. And and maybe not as quick as we thought. We always they, think everything's going to go way quicker wow. than it does, and it often doesn't. Because they but, have three weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Plenty of time, uh -huh. right? Plenty of time. But um, well, not a long. It doesn't take a long time, but it just no, seems no. that there's more than you think. You know, when yeah. you're running it through your brain. So anyway. Yeah. yeah there so, was a, so the big thing was I think. Uh, what sort of prompted this also was somebody did ask us about working, mm. making um, a lid, right, with a hinge and tube so that, it, that you could open the lid on a box. So that's really where it sort of came from was people wanting us to show the, yeah, so again, here's kind of the, here, there's a tube and there's the rod, pretty, pretty simple. Just thought right? I, if somebody has no idea what yeah, we're talking about. Yeah, I know what about. we're talking about. So, so the, the way they're brass and they're manufactured so that the rod just fits right inside the tube, right? So it just slides right inside there. Um, and then, so you can make a hinge uh, with this setup. And so we <laughs> thought I was gonna catch you <laughs> yeah. on something. I, don't know, I wasn't gonna poke, you, poke your eye out, but um, so we're gonna show. So we're gonna how show that you. Like works. we, Val yeah. made a couple yeah. that have some hinges on them, so you can see how the hinge works. Yeah, that's one a little hinge on the back. A little hinge on the back. And this is one of our etched bevels with one of my favorites, the horse on it. So pretty. Very nice. Yes. Yeah. So, oh yeah, because we do have, like, I guess a good deal. Uh, like, well, a great deal on the some of our um, etched bevels. It is. We've got a flash sale going on now through Friday, December 15th. Yeah, I used one here. I have one here that's got the turtle on it. I don't know how well you can see it. And mm -hmm. I'll be assembling a box. So this is just part of it. I try to do some of the stuff beforehand just so it would go a little quicker. But um, So there's a couple of different ways of assembling boxes. You know, there's, I know we have this really nice book too. So if you're looking for patterns, I mean, they're they're great. Um, it's got good instructions as yeah, well. Yeah, the instructions are yeah. really good. So right? it's helpful yeah. too. If you're we'll not... leave that in the comments. Yeah, below. Randy, Randy Wardell certainly knows mm -hmm. knows glass. So, um, and then so I we just kind of Val and I, I think we both just kind of made up our own boxes. Is how I know how I did it. Is how you, I actually did use a it. pattern out of the book. Oh, so oh, based on I, the I mean, I used the box dimensions. size dimensions. Yeah. I didn't use the the. Um, pattern in the lid or any of that. I just used a piece of glass. And so the patterns in the book and this one that you used was like similar to how I was doing mine where I don't I I started soldering the top and I thought, oh I better stop so maybe you guys can see the construction on this one. So the way this box is, I know yours was the same way, is that the side and the back meet up like this. So they one of them, the side here, if this makes any sense, overlaps this edge. So if you look at it here, you got this skinny edge, but here you'll see a wide edge because this wide edge is the width of the thickness of the glass. Doesn't that make any sense to anybody but me? Yeah, well, oh. I to me because I know what you're talking oh. about. But yeah, but these, if you have like this this box here, this blue box that I made is um, is not like this. Mine are the sides of oh, this box like this are oh. all equal length. Oh, awesome. so when you have the base of the box, the four sides of your box being equal lengths, you do um, an inside corner to an inside corner. Um, so can you grab one of the bubbles and maybe we can yeah, so, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to show you with like, just a couple of loose pieces too. Okay, so it goes like, so you're going to put it, instead of overlapping an end, you're going to put those inside corners to inside corners, which basically sort of creates a V to solder down in. So when you're, you're 
your your sizes of your box sides are the equal in size, you do the corner to corner. If Roy's got his here that he's done where his sides are longer than the end. So in that situation, he's going to... Yeah, if you, I, I know these aren't the same size, but just to get, give you an idea, right? So I have five of these two pieces. One of them is going to overlap the other like this, right? So one sits in... in so you actually use one to actually cover the ends cover of the, the ends others. Of the other, do you, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Hopefully, good. If not, let us know. You know, again, if you have questions, uh, don't hesitate. It we do it with the um, think came around our rectangular... Panel. You talk about doing it like it's an end zone. Yeah, yeah, like we're yeah, kind of butting them up against each other, right? Instead, but as Val, Val's point was valid, right? I mean, if you're doing something that's a even, like especially the bevels, right? Cause, right. I mean, the box you can cut it how whatever size you want to make it fit if you're overlapping, but the bevels are they come in a certain size, so you're sort of stuck with that. Mm -hmm. um, this one, then I pretty much um, assembled the box and. What I did was I cut a bottom piece that, if you look at it this way, I think it's really easy to see, right? So the bottom piece covered the entire um, glass. And the reason why I did it that way is because then the box always sits level. Uh, I could have cut the mid, the bottom of the box to fit inside here, but then, you know, then it get kind of wonky, if, especially if your sides aren't perfectly, you mm -hmm. know, if you didn't cut That's them all. That's the way mine the scene, is. So. Mine would be... Um, you know, my box was, it fit inside, so it, oh, you know, so, in. and it makes it, yours makes it a little easier to solder, too, because you have, it's really nice. Yeah. This this one works okay, but I mean, it's just the, the difference in the, the measurements of what you're doing, and that's how. Yeah, I, I left a seam open, just to, so you can see, uh, the Val's point was, I mean, this is real easy to solder, because I can just set it like this and just solder the seam, right? I left one right here, so... I can just solder that seam. I don't have to uh, use any kind of a fancy... Um, right. So when I did this one, you know, we had to kind of prop it up a little bit like this to, so so I would have a nice level thing to solder and not lose my liquid yep. solder to gravity. But like he's saying with his box, the way it's constructed, he can just turn it and set it on the flat sides and it makes it... An, it makes. This one, this style goes together much faster than something like this. But. Yeah, I, I think you run into less issues yeah. with it. Um, but, you know, it depends. So sometimes, you know, the look, so, like I said, you, you always end up with one seam that's bigger than another seam. And I know I've talked to people before and that bugs them or, for some reason. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean, right? So, no, me But neither. I'm going to solder this one real quick just so you guys can kind of see what that's like. And, again, I'm just using a 60-40 solder. I have some flux in this really nice, nice little... Flux dish. dish that Daisy made, isn't that really? I know, it's so fancy, right? And then um, I'm using a Weller uh, Weller soldering iron, but I grab the Hako iron because this is another great iron uh, for doing the box boxes. And one reason why is, as uh, Kaylee's showing you, the tip is a small tip, which you know a lot of times if you forgot to tin your glass and you need to get inside the box, I mean that little tip is a great way of getting inside there. Sometimes the Weller tips are a little too big, um, if you see them in comparison. Now, you can buy a, a different tip for the Weller that's as small as the Hako one, but the Weller comes with this 3 8 inch tip. So, I mean, great for everything else, but sometimes, like I said, if you're trying to get inside and do some delicate soldering work, the, the tip's a little too big. But I flex this one. I'm just going to come in and uh, just show you how I can solder this, right? So it's pretty simple. That's nice. I know that. Now we were talking about it uh, the other day with uh, Val was saying that. So some recommendation sometimes is that you take uh, masking tape and you you tape all the seams on the inside of your box so you don't get any bleed throughs, right? So the solder doesn't drip through to the inside of the box. If you have big, um, big, yes, big especially spaces. if you have big, big no. gaps in it. I actually got a little bit of one. If you want to show that, Kaylee, I got a little glob of solder. I mm -hmm. can see it inside there, right? So to me, it's usually not that big of a deal. I can just come in and just and remove it, right? So I can come in with the iron and pull that out, or I totally forgot to tin the inside of this box, so I'm just using that solder to, to tin the inside. So there's another helpful tip is, so after you foiled your pieces, you should 
tin them. If you're not familiar with what that term uh, means, I'm going to show you real quick. I have a uh, one of these bevels that I did not tin, so uh, I'll be assembling this box in a little while. But it is so it's just copper, right? And then so if you're not familiar with copper foil, it does come with um, you can move the whole thing out. You're right. Um, it comes with different colored backings. And so the backing that I use here is what's called a silver back because I'm just going to leave it silver. And so if you can see inside, I know this one's really hard to see, but because uh, the bevel's so so um, tapered here at the end, but but you sometimes can you can see, see the, right the silver foil that's in there. So I use the silver foil for that reason. But I want to, so the inside of the box, anything that's going to be on the inside, um, you should tin it. That way it's going to be silver and you don't have to worry about trying to change the, the color of the copper later. And all I do is flex that. It doesn't take a lot of solder, um, just a tiny bit. And we're going to come in and, wow, that's not looking. I told you I was having problems with this iron earlier. Oh, really? So, should have gotten yeah, that. Yeah, something I don't know oh, what it is. It's a, it's, I don't think it's a tin block. I think it's the tip. I think the tip's like warped, I told you, I think, because it's, it's not laying flat to touch this. So Weird. Anyway, I know. It's, it's, it's kind of weird. Um, I got the hopper one. Maybe I didn't put it on enough uh, flux on this thing, too. So let me just grab a little bit. Yeah, because the idea when you do tin, the idea is to try to do it fairly quickly. Yeah. Because that excessive heat on that adhesive back foil can can melt that adhesive and it'll start oozing out so you don't really want to spend a lot of time just on that bare piece of foil if you can help it yeah that's a good point that is also another advantage maybe to the to the smaller tip the the hako is too is that you can um, adjust the temperature mm -hmm. so especially when you're doing this kind of thing where you want to be kind of delicate so that's it. Mainly all I'm trying to do again is just turn that silver uh, just so that when I assemble my box on the inside it'll be silver and I don't have to worry about trying to solder it at that point. Um, let me finish but though up on this this particular box because I left I left a few parts um, unfinished because I wanted to uh, show you guys how it assembles together. One is again I was soldering the top and I left it because I was hoping you could see how that piece of glass butts up against this piece of glass but once I solder that you, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to see that, so let me just flex that. Um, Do you know the um, difference in the in the two sizes of the of your of your box? So remember when we used to do the beginning stained glass mm -hmm. candle shelter thing? We did all the time in that mm. in that four end of that four week class. It was always this pattern, and you could make it. I can I can't remember. We could make it any size we wanted, but the difference between the longer sides and the shorter sides was like a quarter of an inch or something like that. So you, it's quarter of an inch because you have to adjust for the thickness of the glass. Okay, right? so that's so, it. So you could make these any size yep. as long as you made the smaller ones a quarter of an inch smaller. Yep. Yeah. Right. I mean, so, I just made up a size when I was doing. Yeah, this but that's one, what but. I'm saying. So I mean, so my point is, is you, you really don't really need a real. If you like this style, you don't need a, a specific pattern. Just you know. Make oh, your yeah, four yeah. sides, just, make two of them the same size, and make two of them. Sorry, I got like these little iron. A quarter this, inch different. Right? This is nice. My iron's running kind of hot today, so I got those little drips, but I'm just going to take them off, right? It's no big deal. Mm, that'd be all right. I don't actually. Um, and then I um, already have, so here's the lid to that box, right? And so uh, one of the things I've already done was assembled, the, I already put the the tube on the back, but in a minute, one of us or both of us will show you how to cut a, <laughs> cut a tube. So one of the important things about when you're tinning the tube, because if you remember, it's brass, right? So it's not silver. So we will tin the tube first and then, um, and then attach it. It just attaches easier that way. But what really is helpful is to take some toothpicks and and put them, if you can see on the end here, right? So I'm going to put it inside the hole just so I don't accidentally fill the hole with solder, right? I mean, that would not it's be a good thing. It's actually very easy to do if you don't have some Yeah, plug. it's quite easy to do. So then um, uh, the other thing is, uh, so I'm going to take those out because I already have the, I bent some rods already. Again, I'm going to show this in a few minutes, or we're going to show this in a few minutes. But, but this is the rod, and I just uh, cut a couple small pieces and bent them into a right angle. Uh, one of the things that's really important to remember is that the tube 
needs to be smaller than, I, I see people do this a lot of times where they cut the tube the, the width of their um, lid uh -huh. or the width of the box and it's got, the tube's going to be too long because we're going to bend these little pieces of rod and put them in the hole, right? And, yeah. And, um, and you're going to see that they're going to that takes up space. So. so then that's going to go on like this, right? So I put that on and then what I'm going to do with this is solder these right into the joint. So I have a little play with this so I could... You know, you can see where I could pull these out or push them in, depending on where everything, where it lies in, right? Um, and then uh, sometimes people will, another reason for tape is sometimes people tape the lid mm -hmm. to the to the body so that, again, it um, doesn't move on you when you're trying to do it. But uh, I'm not going to do that because I'm in a hurry. Yeah, so I don't know. So we'll go through this and, and show you how to yeah. measure and how to cut the tube. And yeah, 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 yeah. Because I don't know, for some people, this might not be might not be real clear what's going on here. Yeah, it's almost like backwards. I'm showing it backwards for some reason. Right, so I'm just yeah. lining it up, and then we're going to just slide that over where it needs to go. So, of course, the other tricky thing here, too, then, is also to um, not solder up there, right, where the... Where the yeah, you don't want to where the rod that, goes into the that little L yeah piece has to be this. able to move can't yeah. be soldered. And then we're just going to come in here, again, same deal, just kind of tack solder that on. Mainly, I'm just uh, I'm tack soldering that on at this point, right? Because if I did something wrong and I got it all kind of wonky, I can just you know unsolder that and then pull it back off and adjust it so i just kind of get a little solder there i'll go back later and make it look you know look nicer and all i mean by that is i'll go in and try to hide hide as much of the uh, rod as i can right so I, I would solder up here more to to do that but as we were talking before you got to be a little careful you can't go up too far because you run the risk of um yeah so actually do you see these would have been brass because i did not um, I, d I was afraid to get too taut, too high up there with the solder. So I actually, we sell this pink pen, mm -hmm. the silver one. And so it was really pretty visible because I knew I didn't have time to redo it if I messed it up. So I stayed down a ways. I don't know if you can mm -hmm. see, but I used the paint pen to go in and color the brass and it, it actually worked pretty good. So Oh, yeah. Yeah, because really tinning the, did you say, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Did you say tinning the rod's not a, probably a great idea? I didn't say that, but yeah. that it isn't. I've tried it, and it it adds just enough mass onto that rod that it doesn't want to be loose in the tube, yeah. and you really need it to be <clears throat> um, really able to turn. And so I quit doing that, and then that's when I discovered this, and I didn't have to um, be too careful because I could always go back and and touch up the any of the brass that shows through, you know. So. Yeah, so this one is, um, so you can see that, I mean, even that little bit, I just text out of that, it, it opens up pretty well. Um, and it looked, I, I intentionally made, if you can see this from the side, I made the lid uh, about a quarter of an inch longer, uh, just so you could open the box that way. Uh, you know, Val has these beautiful marbles <laughs> that she made um, as part of the lid lifter. Uh, we talked about, there's a variety of things you can yeah. do. I'm going to... Uh, I think on the bevel, I've, I'm working on something that I'll show you. But sometimes people will um, uh, solder. We have these. I we didn't grab a decorative them. scroll. We have these like. little decorative scrolls that are so that it's a, like a pre-bent um, wire, copper wire that already has solder on it, right? And you could solder one of those to the front to, to act as a lid lifter. So those are some uh, different ideas that you could do. The other thing people do is, and if we have time, I'll show this. But I'm not sure we're going to have time. But the other thing people will do is put a, a chain in here. Um, if you wanted to put a chain on the lid so that it stops it from opening all the way up and, and you run the risk of it flopping this way and maybe pulling off or something, right, doing some damage. So so you could solder a piece of chain, you know, from here, and then you want to catch, you catch, you a, catch seam. a seam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Not just the edge um, of the floor. And so you would come in and solder that there, and then you would uh, take the other one and then solder down inside somewhere. Uh, actually, what you do is you solder the one inside the box first. Um because uh, then you have room to do that, right? I mean, if you if you solder the lid, and you got to solder inside the box. You just you got like that much room to get in there. So, so you just solder down in there. And so I use this. I like using this. Uh, I mean, we've called it box chain forever. I don't know if that's what we still call it, right? So it's got little links in it, and the and 
what I always do, again, here comes those trusty toothpicks again, is if you have a toothpick, you can put it through that bottom link, and then you can hold it right down here where you need to solder it, and then you can just drip some solder in there, get in there with your iron and just drop a little solder and hold it. That way you, you keep your fingers away from it. And I even do the same thing up here on this back end. I would do the same thing, just grab a link and hold it up here as you're trying to solder it. I mean, you'll you know burn the wood, but but yeah. who cares, right? So. But you'd burn your fingers if you didn't. Yeah, you'd definitely the, burn your fingers. It so. definitely heats up. Yeah, time. and if we have time, I'll, I'll do that. But I don't know if we're going to have time because we're... No, I don't. We're busy people. We are and stuff. Okay. Like that, so. Okay, so then... So the, should you cut the tube and the rod first to show that before you... Yeah, you know, I, I always... Uh, I like to assemble stuff first, but let me... Yeah, let's... So this is going to be the lid of my box. Let's let's show you how to do the, the tube and the rod because that seems to be the... Um, that was the question we got from somebody was about that. So here's the... Um, uh, this is going to be my lid. And so I've got a, a tube here. And so, again, if I if I cut it here into the length of it, it's going to be too long. So just cut a little too small, a little shorter. I often just do like about a quarter of an inch, uh, to be honest. I don't always measure it, measure it. But I was looking for, um, uh, oh, thanks for the ruler. I was looking for a Sharpie, but sorry. So then I mark it, right, because, uh, so you could measure it, right, if, if you're the kind of person that likes measuring stuff, like, like I normally am. So this is like a four inch, so I would like probably put it somewhere in the three and three quarters inch. I think works pretty good, so let me mark that with a Sharpie just so I know where I have to cut it. And um, then we're going to come in, and there's a few different ways of cutting this. <laughs> um, I can tell you, I'll show you the way that I just have always done it. So I will um, slide the rod in here and um, to support the tube, because if you're cutting the tube, you run the risk of collapsing it. Uh, and pinching it off. So I'm sliding a rod through and that will support, help support it while I'm doing that. And then I, you can use wire cutters. Uh, over here at Delphi, we have, um, you know, lead nippers. So that's what I'm using. But uh, I'll tell you that, um, you probably shouldn't use your good no, lead nippers no. for doing this. Mark so. wire on your handle. Wire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. See, it says wire. So we know we only use this for, for this type of thing. We don't use it for cutting lead. It's, uh, it's not good for the lead uh, lead nippers. So I'm going to come in. What's again? What's really nice about these is there's a flat side to them, right? You can see here's a flat side compared to this kind of. And so if you're looking right down that flat side, you can see right where you're cutting, and you can see how. Um, and then you want to try to keep it as uh, perpendicular to the to the tube as you can, and then you're going to crimp it. So I'm just squeezing slightly. And then I rotate it. Oh gosh, I just slid. Yeah, the trick here is try yeah. not to get out of your groove. Yeah. You know, I mean, try to rotate it a little bit with a little pressure on your on your jaws because it's hard to find the. Yeah, it, it's it, hard to get back in that. It's groove. hard to get back in the yeah. groove. So she's right. So just you know, I'm just barely moving it and crimping it slightly. And then, so what I'm not trying to do, I am not trying to cut through the whole thing right now, right? Because that will just pinch it and and. Um, yeah, so and you won't get a very good clean cut. So what I'm really trying to do is think of it as like scoring, right? I'm trying to score all the way around it. Um, I gradually increase the pressure a little bit. Um, sometimes when I'm not paying attention, I actually end up cutting all the way through the tube. But I can tell you, that's not really my goal is not to cut through the tube. What I'm really trying to do is just score it and then snap it is what I really want to do. So let's see if I can do that without cutting all the way through it. So. But you you tried something different, didn't you, Val? Or you I, cut it a different way? And yeah, I did. I did. I did a couple of them this way, and I was successful. And then I wasn't successful. And so then, um, in the book, um, it it actually talks about using a file, like a, a we didn't we don't have a real thin, yeah, we file, have a thin file, but we actually so. just a little bit ago did it with this file down here. You know, and it's just kind of the same thing, though. You're just, you're not trying to saw through it. You're trying to saw a little, rotate, you know, saw a little, rotate. And that worked, too. And then I used this earlier at home, and I just did the same thing. I This knife, I just kind of scored and turned, scored and turned. So the, the biggest key, I think, is to keep the rod in the tube when you're doing it, yep. and that will help um, not collapse Of course, it. now pulling it out is always the trick. Did you, part, right? um, did you, my hands are, like... 
I probably have flex on my fingers, so I can't. Oh, you want me to pull? Yeah, but you think you can pull it, but well, I can do this. That. Happened to me earlier, right? Is well, it, it's like kind of greasy, bent. right? No, I don't think it's greasy. I don't know where you, yeah, you keep you crimp the whole thing. I must thing. have crimped that too hard. Yeah, look at that. Good thing I didn't oh, have any carryover, or else I would have got you in the throat. Oh, well, poke me in the face. This is a dangerous thing. It's too, some kind so. of payback for something, I'm sure. So I crimped kind of through it, right? And then what you're going to do there is just kind of back and forth and just kind of snap it off, right? So that's how you want to cut it because if you can look at the end, if, um, yeah, it's hard to focus probably on it, but it's it's relatively open. It's still relatively still. round, too. And then what I like flat. to do is I always file that uh, real quick. So this is a metal file, so not a wood file. And I just come in and just, you know, just take any little burr off there real quick. Um, sometimes I'll come in this direction to get, you, you'll get a little burr on there. And I just like to take that off so it doesn't cause problems later. You want to take the uh, rod and come in from the end that's the factory cut side and, and try to push it through. Do you see how I've pushed it through? And then if you do that a few times, that kind of, you know, reams it back open. The other thing I really like doing is, oh, I left it over there. Give me a second is I use um, an X-Acto knife. So if you have one of these kind of X-Acto knives, and then I come in to the opening and then oh. just roll it um, around inside there, and that takes any little burr off too. That seems to really sort of help um, kind of clean out that hole a little bit. I mean, unless you had a little small file, which might work, you could do it, but we don't around here. And again, I just always um, come with the with the rod again, just to make sure that that's, you know, just to make sure that it comes in clean through the tube. That's that's the most important thing. And then we're gonna cut the cut the rod. So I cut the rod. Uh, so one thing uh, that we do around here, we recommend, is cutting um, small little pieces that go in here. So instead of taking one big long, sometimes people will do them like this, where they will go all the way through and then bend a right angle, and then bend a right angle here. Um, and I don't know if people think that gives them maybe a more stability or whatever, but the reason why I stopped doing that was because sometimes, again, if you're using art glass, it's not always the flattest, you know, smoothest stuff. And so it can get a little wavy sometimes, and that can interfere with you trying to, like, settle your lid down, right? I mean, if you're working with bevels or, or really, uh, like, window glass, you probably wouldn't have any issues. So now we do it like this where we cut two little small pieces um, and, and bend them into L shapes and put those in. So if you can see, I've got this going on and only that's going in the end. Um, that way, uh, if I have to get, you know, something weird with this, it's you can adjust it a whole, much, a whole lot easier, mm -hmm. right? So, so I cut the um, same deal with this. A lot of times I'll just cut it. I'll just cut all the way through this. You can, if you want, you know, do the, the crimp and rotate thing. Um, but I find it easier sometimes to just cut through the whole thing. I cut it a few times and then we can come in and just snap it, right? So, right. So I did the same thing there. I sometimes try to cut two the same length. So I just come in and take the tool and I know the, those two will be the same way. Um, cut it a couple times, snap it on there. I also often will then on that cut at cut end, sometimes you have to just file it a little bit. Um, it gets a little burr on it. Um, usually, there's you only really need one good end on the on the rod because it just just one good end has to go in through the hole, right? So like that was the that was a bad one, but right, I got one good one there. Got a good one there, right? So that's all you really need. And then so these we're gonna bend. Usually, I just try to bend them about in half. Um, I usually use a pair of pliers. I happen to have a pair of these breaker grozer pliers, but regular pliers I think work a little bit better. And then just come in and bend that right into a about a 90 degree is what we're, we're looking for, right? That mm -hmm. looks pretty close to me, right? Same bill here. And if it hurts your thumb to do that, I, I use a table a lot of times. I'll just come in here and just bend it, right? So I assume that you know, once it hits the once it hits the edge of the plier, that's going to be a ninety degree angle. So I just have to bend it so I can touch the the plier to the um, to there, and you can see that's a that one's actually even better ninety degree angle than the one that I did. So, and then again, so those would go into the ends, and that would be 
And then that's what creates the whole hinge, right? So yep. That. And then yep. And then that that gets soldered to the lid. To the back yeah, of that the gets lid. soldered to yeah. the back of the lid, which I think we're gonna, I'm still going to try to do that, right? Do we have? Yeah, I think you we should. have time. Are you going to tack your box together then? Yeah, I'm going to tack my box together. All right. Go so for it. let's let's do that, right? Okay, do so, it. Uh, just might as well just do it. Yeah, might as well just jump right in there. Jump Let's right show in. Show some of the tools you've got real quick to help make this oh, process yeah, yeah, a yeah. little bit easier. Oh, we have. Oh, oh yeah. Geez. We got those. Well, that's more for like soldering once it's together. Yeah. But this is called a professional box maker. And what this is used for is this, right? So if you're trying to set your stuff up, you can come in here and slide these together. This actually sets up pretty nice, right? Mm -hmm. And then I can come in here and then tack solder this. In fact, why don't I just that really it? helps it's a lot? It's specifically made for it because you can see right where the soldering iron is supposed to yep. go. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really quite nice. Um, mm -hmm. As opposed to at home, I was using other boxes, and <laughs> rolls of solder, <laughs> and trying to. Right oh no, it's just they, they use an orange. Do they? I <laughs> had an orange that was propping up something. I whatever, did. whatever you works. Use whatever you have That's available. You but this would be nice to have available. So here we're going to come in and slide these together. And for me, I just I'm I'm tack soldering, right? And I. I don't really care what the bottom is. I'm assuming it's going to meet up pretty nice, but I can then now I can fudge the bottom and get those together a little bit better like that. I want them inside the inside and then um, tax out of that, right? A little. I didn't flex that, did I? Mm. See, that's interesting because I don't very often do the bottom. I do the I do the top, then oh, I just carefully the flip it oh, over, no, and then I do the bottom. That's, I, I try to do them both. For the same reason you said earlier, if things aren't lining up i just have one place to there, at least there's it. something to be said about that right so the other thing that that you guys don't really well if this was a box that i had made that I, like like this like when i made this box um you know i cut the pieces i fold them soldered them together right and i assembled the box upside down um if that makes any sense and so i so even in my head i am doing this one upside down the reason why is because now when i'm done if this is the bottom of the box when I flip it over, the top is going to be totally flush, right? There, all right. the sides are going to meet up, and I don't care if the bottom is off because I'm going to solder a, a you know a bottom piece to it, and I can hide the fact that they're not all the same size or something. Right. With the bevel, well, even with bevels, you sometimes have to be careful because yeah, they're not as they're, exact. Yeah, as people they're not as exact they as people think they are. So we're going to come in here this time. I'm actually going to use some flux. Why not? Right. I know there's way, other ways of getting this. Uh, people will use clips or something to kind of clip them to this, which mm -hmm. makes sense. But I didn't grab that, so we're just going to kind of do it this way. Yeah, there we go. Right, three sides, and somewhere I have a fourth one. No? This is going to be the greatest box ever. It's a three three sided three -sided box. Three sided box. Since I had a fourth, I had a fourth bevel. Some earlier today. Hmm. Not your lid. No, it's not my lid. I didn't take uh, it. Give me just half a second. Like, uh, what did I do? So we can link the professional boxer hmm. and our oh hand well. Edges. Oh my gosh. And there's the fourth bevel. Hey, there's the fourth bevel. Um, it just doesn't happen to have any foil have on any it yet. Foil on it, so which does make does it. Does anybody want to see how to foil it? But, uh, that would be. Um, how fast can you foil it? Make yeah, it like how fast can oh, you foil it? Oh, it's not going to be fast. Let's all just relax and talk <laughs> amongst ourselves. <laughs> what do you guys have any questions now? Why are you fine. saying that's right? You just uh, <laughs> come on and uh, uh, ask us all anything, whatever. Well, don't ask me because I'm busy foiling, but. I know. Ask. Well, we don't want to prolong that. That's for sure. Dang. So, and like we said, we'll link the box pattern in the comment section below when we're done. But you yeah, I think the, I think like you say, the, you can come up with your own types of measurements and make the box the size you want. There's some nice patterns in that book that will give you options to you know do a decorative lid. Um, but I think one of the real values to that book is the directions because I think if you've never really done it before. Um, even going back and rewatching this might not be all that helpful, <laughs> but um, uh, but the book is, is the book is saying? actually very helpful. So um, I thought it was pretty. I know thorough. But they did say in the in that book, just stay right there. I'm gonna grab this. That um, that a file works well to cut this tube, and and actually I did it a little while ago just because that's what they recommended, and. 
this one's clunky, you know, but if you had a file that you could really use, the a metal file, you know, thinner or that you could really use and hold it, I actually think it worked better than anything. Yeah, it really did. So, but like we said before, the main trick when you cut these tubes is just to make sure you have um, the rod in there because that'll prevent a lot of it. So from bending or crimping shut. So well, we do have a question from Donna. Yeah, thanks, um, Donna. Do you <laughs> butt the sides together to have sort of a V, like we're doing with the bevel, and then you solder, or do you overlap? So depends on the your particular box yep. that you're doing. This one with the four sides being the same size, it's going to be the V. It's going to be the inside corner to inside corner, which will create that V opening. In the box like over here that Roy did before, that's going to be those those short ends actually got soldered, covering up the sides. Yeah, longer. covering up the ends of the others. So I don't know. It's hard to. So it just really depends. It depends on which yeah which pattern you're using. Yeah. Yeah, and as, as you made a good point earlier, Val too, is that when the uh, when you butt the ends against each other, you can assemble the box. You can solder it just sitting flat on the table. You don't need any kind of jig or something like we're using. You know the wedges or the the box um, professional mm -hmm. box maker to really to put them together, but yeah, yeah, that one goes together without a lot of extra propping up. Maybe beginners would like to do the yeah, and that's why together. we did for years and years. Remember, we we had a four week beginning stained glass yeah, yeah, class, we and at the usually on the fourth week when everyone was pretty much finished with their things, we we showed how to put this box together and it was that box where you cut two two sides the same and then the other two sides are a quarter inch different than the you know so it's like two different sizes four pieces and it i think it goes together i think it's a good beginner one to do because you like i said you're not trying to prop everything up to get it to so that tack. wasn't that wasn't horrible no Nope. Wasn't horrible. Boiling in record time. I'm thinking about I think starting. Question, I think I'm starting a YouTube channel. Just me boiling. Mm -hmm. It's just riveting. That's gonna be our next reel. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep it a surprise. Okay. Dang it. I'm just tinning the um, inside of the box again, people. That's what I'm doing here. So if you're wondering what's going on, just trying to tin it so that it's nice and silver looking. I don't know why just, you don't switch to that other. I know it's plugged in. It's driving me nuts. Driving Val nuts. There you go. Flux. I'm going to set something on fire. There you go. Beautiful. It's definitely hotter. And I got to say, okay. I'm a huge fan of those smaller tips. I mean, for a lot mm. of things, not just. Mm. But I think it's I what you it. get used to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I learned on a smaller one, right? I learned on the Weller, but I also think. It's also kind of your thought process. A lot of people think a bigger tip will cover more surface area. That's when why. Really, I the solder seam is just the solder seam. Yeah, that is true. Okay, I got some. What help I You got the shakes. Out? Mm -hmm. No. All right, last one. You probably don't even really need the box at this point, the box maker, right? So, one reason why we just tack solder, especially if this again was something that you where you cut the, your own glass, um, it's possible it's not everything's not totally square, and it allows you to to adjust it. You'll see when I pull it off what what I mean by that. So this box, from this angle, you can see how it's slightly flexible, right? And that's intentional. Again, just to make sure, in case I didn't get perfect right angles when I'm soldering it, and I was mentioned to you guys before, especially if it's something that you cut out on your own and there's no guarantee that every piece is the exact same size. So then I would flip it over because this is actually the top of the box, right? So the top of the box is going to be nice and smooth. Um, I did, oh, I used the ML Walker uh, glass for the um, bottom. 
If you're not familiar with this glass, it's uh, really a nice, there's a wide variety of different um, styles and colors the to same it. One. Do you use the same one? I think, and no. No, no we use you the blue. Used oh. oh. No, you did. It just, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's maybe just mm -hmm. cut a different piece. Wow, look at that. Yeah. yeah, we didn't even plan that, right? So, so then this would, this is just going to sit like right inside like this, right? So uh, sometimes we put decorative um, uh, boxes or solder, uh, solder or glass oh, in, in, the, in bottom. the bottoms just for uh, reflective. reflective purposes, kind of. right? Let's, I like Especially this the scene. holiday ones, I like to. We used to sell all those. Remember all those pretty red and green? We had all those yeah, colored yeah, mirrors. All, yeah, lots of colored mirrors. Out. So then you can just put it on here, right? And so again, the advantage here is that now I can kind of, since I only text out of the box, I can kind of yeah, wiggle right. the box and um, get it to um, square up. So usually what I do is try to just get one corner squared up, and then I'm going to text out of that real quick. And then we'll come in and just touch that. Right, and then I can just, I can come actually all the way to the other side. And then do this one, and then that'll that'll square it up totally. Um, again, the advantage to this is that this piece of glass is relatively flat, so my box is going to sit flat. And this is a great example, too, and I, I think you can kind of see it on the camera. You can see where there's a little bit of a gap. Which what? is why you're talking about doing the bottom. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, do you see this gap? Right? So that happens sometimes. So, but now when the box is sitting like this, it's, it doesn't rock or move, and no yeah. one's going to ever see a gap there because I'm going to fill it in with solder in right. a second, right? So and I think it's, an, it's another good point to, to emphasize that you're not running all your seams right now, too. I yep. mean, that's, I think yep. it's good to tack it, you know, get it all constructed, tack it together, and then that also yep. gives that solder a chance to cool off a little bit. So when you go back to run your seams, you know, you're, you're not yes. going to accidentally release something that's already still pretty hot, you know, which could happen. So here's the um, so here's the lid, right? And then here's the, the tube and the um, rods, right, already bent. And so this is one thing I always do too, right before I do this. Sometimes I tape it on, but I don't, not always. I'm going to set this on here. Do you tin this first? I am going to tin that. Yeah, okay. I forgot to do it. So uh, I set it on here. Just I want to make sure that the, the um, the, I can't keep forgetting what these are called. These, the rods. I just want to make sure the rods are going to fit inside the seam, right? So if I need to adjust the length of this, uh, the tube, now is the time to do that, right? So it looks like I'm, I'm all right. Looks like those are going to hide right in the seams pretty good. Looks like I don't have to do much more than just um, solder the tube on. So let me uh, let me do that real quick. Uh, well, I don't know if it's going to be quick, but uh, I'll do that. First, as Val pointed out, I am going to tin. Oh, let me leave these. Where's in. your picks? Yeah. I'm going to tin the, the tube real quick. So brass takes a little more heat than than almost any other metal that we're soldering, right? So we're going to come in on that side. Oh, I was going to say, you know, the this. first one I did, I held it up in the air. <laughs> well, I mean, I held it so the gravity dripped it down. So I thought, oh. why didn't I just leave it on the table and roll it? As yeah, I that's did. what I do. So yeah, like, well, it, was, it goes way faster this way. This is the way to go. So just, you know, give it a second, like, to heat up, right? Once the brass gets hot enough, it just, the solder will flow. And then I can kind of roll it a bit, right? So you'll see I have my finger, oh, I didn't. You gotta, you really, with the brass, you have to flex everything, so. Um, there we go. Mm -hmm. Grab some of those. Come in here. I don't know. Super fascinating, I know. Right. It, it, I'm like, Val's I'm mesmerized, but she's just like, wow. That, that I think I almost... She's so surprised because, you know, she held it the last time. So she's just enjoying watching the I know, it. right. I, yeah. And, it, you know, it doesn't even have to be, like, super smooth or super nice, right? Because we're going we're gonna to cover it, right? We're going to solder it in. So mainly the point is turn it silver so that you, you don't want to have to try to, when it's on the box, you don't want to have to mess around trying to make that look silver because you're adding way too much heat to mm -hmm. what's going on. So anyways, I'll let that kind of go. I'm going to then um, do the same thing here. I'm going to tack solder this now to the to the back of this. Is, does it make a difference across the back? Or does it? it? You want it facing you is how you want So you want it, if, yeah. 
Is that right? Is the turtle facing us? Is no. What do you mean? He's facing the tube now. Oh, well, that's the way you want it to be. Yeah, yeah. Good. I think he wants it to look like that. Yeah. I do want it to look like that. Okay, so then, right here, I just eyeball it, right? Just kind of eyeball about what's in the center, right? We um, be careful touching the tube, make sure it's not like super hot, but mine was not hot, so. And then, same deal, I'm just going to tack solder, right? We we tack everything. Um, I could have used more solder. There we go. Right, you don't don't have to go crazy with soldering at this point because, uh, again, one if it's wrong, right? So, so then I do one last little thing, right? Pull those out, slide these in. Let's give it one more check. Just make sure everything's all right. That fits on there. You can see I can adjust those to fit inside the seam, so that looks like that's going to work. So now I can get a little more aggressive with the soldering. I will try to, um, you know, make that look a little nicer. Uh, one of the things maybe you're noticing is I have some ball chain around the outside here. Uh, the reason is, that we were talking about it earlier, is that when you're working with only bevels, everything's the exact same size, and so the lid has a, there's a chance that it might just fall inside. So I just added this ball chain. One part is decoration, but the second is just to make the lid a little bigger so that it'll sit on top and not, not uh, fall in and cause problems. And then I'm noticing you do it on two sides, not three. Well, I am going to do the front, but I thought I might do that as a yeah, as a demonstration. So I thought maybe people might want to see that. So I'm going to come in here. So usually on uh, these kind of things, and Val mentioned it earlier, a lot of times with this stuff, it's better just to you know get some solder down. Give it a chance to cool down, and then if you want to make it look nicer, to you know, do it a little bit later. Usually, I'll let that kind of cool, and then I can come down and try to smooth the solder out if I want. But I really just wanted to get the solder in there. Um, you could also then flip it over, uh, uh, make sure that it's attached here on the inside, because um, again, you really want that tube grabbing on uh, pretty well. I mean, if you think about it, the tube is only. Oh, mm -hmm. that was the point I was going to make. The, yeah, you got to be careful at it, this point. It's only grabbing foil, right? That's the only thing that's holding it. So if we can, while that's cooling a tiny bit, let me show you this. I I purposely designed this lid like this. If you'll notice, there's a seam that comes here. There's a seam that comes here, and then so when I solder the tube on the back, that adds some strength to the tube, right? If it was only soldered to the foil. The only thing holding the, t the tube in place is foil. So again, just a design thing. If you're thinking about making your own boxes, uh, I was going to run these two seams going this way, but it makes more sense to run here where I'm into the tube. That adds a little more strength to mm -hmm. it. So. Right, so then there's that. Oh, I said I was going to show you the ball chain. Let me just show you how that's done. Not, It's nothing, again, too super complicated. Uh, we saw it by the foot here at Delphi. I, I cut it down already, so it's in good little pieces. I put a, um, I pin that in place just so I um, don't push on this and it gets out of my way. Then I'm going to pin the um, the ball chain in place. Sometimes I pin it several places, and then we're going to flux and. Um, so like out here, the ball chain is still kind of loose. And so when I solder it, again, I'm going to use this um, toothpick to help hold it in place. So it's, again, not one of those things where I'm just trying to keep my hands away from the, all the hot stuff, right? So I will come in here, kind of hold that in place. Oh, can you see it? No. Sorry. Which yeah, why don't you come around? Sorry, I could have done, maybe done it the other way. So I'm using this just to hold the, the ball chain in place a little bit, and then I come in. And again, the same deal, right? All you want to do is tack solder. I don't really care what it looks like at this point. All I want to do is um, get this sticking. Uh, give it, and I'll, I'll tell you that you've got to give it a few seconds to solidify, right? So it's not going to set up immediately because of the... Right, then I can take that one out now, and I can come in here and do that one. I'll come in and get the ones on the end. Text out of this one. 
you see how the it, you see how this gets loose, right? So I just grab it in between two of the balls, and then come in and uh, keep it tight, keep it tight up against there, tax out it real quick. But I probably didn't flux this, right? And then again, let that cool, come back in. Then I can fill it all in. I can take some time and try to fill in the holes, which I'm not going to do just because of time. But I think you guys get the idea, do you? We'll show. But Hopefully. Yeah, and you see the other sides, right? I filled in the holes here, tried to make the solder look a little nicer. You see what I did there? You can see it's not really, you know, I mean, there's gaps in there and stuff. Um, and normally I would go in there and try to fill that in. But because of time, I'm not going to. Oh, let me show then one other thing. I'm going to show the seams on this one. So we were talking earlier that, the, I don't know if it's a disadvantage, but when you solder these seams, you have to do them, as Val was pointing out, right? This has to be level. Uh, so uh, these wedges are really come in handy, right? I mean, you're not going to catch them on fire if you drip solder on them. They hold this at a really nice 45 degree angle, so you can come in here and get this. So I would come in here, flex this, and then um, work on. I know some people tin all both sides of their their pieces when they're doing boxes to make this go easier, or so you don't have to worry about trying to cover everything at once, but. Yeah, I just tripped right there. Well, that would be the reason with the mask. The is super mm -hmm. hot. Same deal. I mean, Val made a good point. Sometimes we just, like I said, you know, we solder it, let it cool, come back, try to make it look um, nicer later, right? Mm -hmm. But when you do these, um, like this particular kind, yeah, see, you have to come around and. So I, you could tin it first, but I don't think it's. Essential. It's more the inside that really is helpful yeah, you to too. do. I would agree, right? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, what Val's talking about, because since this See is a this, bevel. Yeah. See the copper over here, it didn't. Yeah, let me make another pass. Yeah, yeah, so just mm -hmm. because it's a bevel, I mean, just coming down the middle, you're not going to actually get both sides. So you actually have to kind of, you know, uh, turn the iron and then come in at more of an angle so that you can get that, get that part of it, right? So I'll come in here. Right. Mm -hmm. So I would do that for all the seams, which again I'm not going to do because of time. But um, but these do work really nice. I mean, they're they're, they're great. I mean, they're they're non-skid and they're, they're oh really yeah, that's stable. the other nice thing yeah. about them. It's surprising how how big of a piece you can actually put in there, right? So then let's let's attach the the uh, tube to this one. Again, I I would have normally taken a little time and cleaned up some of the solder, but we don't. You guys get the idea. And then we're <laughs> right. So I'm going to set that on there, making sure that you know it looks kind of nice up in the front and in the sides. I want to make sure these are in this seam, and that's in that seam. That looks pretty good. We're going to flex this. Flex this pretty good. Not really. These bevels are narrower than the you know the they taper real on uh, on the end really hmm. pretty narrow so so there's not as big of a gap as you normally get right oh. sort of my point of it oh cool which is nice but it's harder to hide the um <laughs> harder, yeah, to hide harder to hide the wire yeah. so i'm gonna come in here we also were talking too that you know this tube and rod um situation that we sell and they're manufactured for this purpose but we've also talked about you could you could use um, wire, copper wire, or something oh, yeah. that fits in the tube. You know, this would be you certainly could, right? A little more pliable. They have this one right in there. I got a little ball of solder right there. That's kind of bugging me. All right, I got it out of the way. Right, so tack soldered that in, tack soldered the other one in. That's the lid, right? Okay, did you, could you see the tax mm -hmm. in? Can you see it, right? So, I mean, I don't have it like crazy, right? Again, I'm just tack soldering it because I can go in and, and play around with this as I um, as I do this because I think I might. So, it. talk about then now when you solder that seam, you're going to solder up. How far are you going to mm -hmm. get? How high are you going to get? 
how close are you? Oh going to yeah, get to, to the that? thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll do one real quick or part. part just because through. that's you know you, you think that oh I can just go a little further, a little further, but the solder sometimes spreads, you know, and if you think it jumps in there. yeah, and it boy it well it yeah it can it um, does can when it gets hot it will uh it can follow the heat right the solder can in fact it's you know. In the, in the plumbing world, when they're sweating pipes, that's what they're doing, right? They get the copper really hot, then the solder flows to the hot spot. So, right. so Val's got a point. You got to be careful. So, um, let's see how careful I can be. Well, I just thought it'd be good to show them about how much is a safe. Yeah. So I would come in here, and um, for me, I usually do. So I don't know how well you can see this. Let me turn it around. So you can see the bend in here, right? So I would not. I solder. I would try to solder to up to here, and then not. I wouldn't even go near this bend, and then towards the tube because that that's way too risky, right? So I that's how, that's how as far as I would go. If yeah, that makes I any sense, to like I'm almost the height of the bevel. I know I it's a little little higher than what um, Val was recommending, but well, I'm not just. I I wasn't really recommending it. I oh, was just were. saying that's what I decided to do because I wasn't going to deal with it if it oh. went in there. Well, that's a recommendation, right? No. I got the, I'm getting it so hot the foil is coming. I know. So then we would just come in and try to hide this, right? So first I want to get this thing looking a little bit better. I'm going to come around this backside, see if we can, I don't know, if maybe you can see it better this way. And then I would just come in. It's, Depending on how, like this particular one, as I was mentioned before, the bevels are kind of narrow, so they don't really have, there's not like a real deep V here. Normally you can hide that right inside that seam pretty tight, but this one is not. Yeah, mine are that. pretty in there. I never got, mine aren't polished or anything either, so they would look better if they were. Yeah, where did it go? In your cord. Oh, I know I got stuff all over the place. That's just amazing. I know I do the same thing. I think I have everything so organized. The next thing I know, next I you know, like stuff over, over, over my flux, and you know. So you can see sort of what I did there, right? So you know, I'm trying to um, hide that if I can. It's actually not um, going to be all that super easy because it's just gonna. It's gonna be more like the other box where the the um, the rod kind of sits on top of the glass a little bit. It's not the end of the world. I can hide it a little bit more if I just add a little more solder, right? And then try to make that, you know, look a little, a little um, more rounded. Mm -hmm. But they're so, he's pretty far up. You yeah, can I'm see. pretty far up. I, I, I'm but pretty there's still, oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, no. But there's yeah, still no, that little silver, piece of brass. There's that little piece of brass. Stuff, which is, like I said, I know, Val's got this great this, idea. Which this I'm works really, really good, you guys. This little silver paint pen works really good. To oh, I don't have the problem with my videos. Just figured it out. Hmm. I got a glob of solder back here that's making the lid not open really as nicely as I would have liked. But, anyways. You know, we could putz around with these for a while, so so we won't. But, but that was, so there you that's go. it in a nutshell, right? Yep, that's it. And uh, this will probably be available for sale on uh, <laughs> Etsy Delphi's shop? Etsy shop. But, uh, <laughs> Delphi doesn't have an Etsy shop. Well, hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you, um, you guys uh, learned a little bit from that. Uh, and if hopefully, not, yes. If not, then sorry. But you can um, email us if you have any questions, right? You can always get a hold of us. There's uh, Facebook at DelphiGlass.com, or you can message us on Facebook or Instagram. I think that's about all the things that... Can they that email us? Did you already say I that? I said the email. Oh, okay. Email. Well, then, then they know they can. That's and good. I was barely reading it, too. Oh, but, okay, good. Um, and, suggestions, though. Yeah, again, I was just going to say the same thing, right? Okay, if you have ideas for suggestions, again, we're... We're um, going to come back, I think, in two weeks, whatever date that is, which we are not 100% sure, but because uh, <laughs> we don't have a calendar in here. But It'll be a Wednesday, I it'll think. It'll be Wednesday in a couple of weeks. Uh -huh. And um, if you got ideas, we'd like to see something. I mean, Val and I would be happy to show you. So. Yeah. Oh, but, this, this was great. Thank you. So thank you all for joining us. Oh, yeah, thanks. thanks for joining us.